Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. My current favorite breakfast meal has three components in it that I didn't eat at all as a child. The first, this will sound weird, but is fresh berries. My mother doesn't care for blueberries or blackberries, and where I grew up, I don't even remember having blackberries, although where I live now in Oregon, they grow wild everywhere, and you can just pick them whenever you're out for a hike. She did like raspberries and strawberries, but to this day, she will not eat either of those things unless she has a bowl of white sugar to dip them into. She won't eat them just plain. And what I remember about having fresh berries at home is it was usually going to be strawberries, and what she'd do is cut them up and put some sugar with them and let them sit and get juicy, and then she would serve that sort of strawberry sauce that developed over drop biscuits that she would cut in half and turn open side up and call it strawberry shortcake with whipped cream on the top. The second thing that we didn't have in my house was yogurt. My mother dislikes anything with that kind of consistency. So while we had instant puddings when I was a kid, you know, jello instant powdered pudding stuff, I used to love to make that. And at one point, I also did some real live, authentic, cooked on the stovetop puddings that I really liked. My mother doesn't care for those things, so she didn't fix them. And of course, you know, the instant packets, she didn't have to like them because we kids could fix them ourselves. And yogurt was not a thing when I was growing up. I'm sure there were people who ate it, But it didn't really come into popular consumption like you could buy it in your grocery store until a long time after my formative years. And again, the texture is not something my mother ever liked. And I think that the first yogurts that came out were kind of sour. They were yogurt. They didn't know how to turn them into dessert the way they do now. (laughs) And I fell in love with yogurt after they turned them into dessert. I'm sure that the ones that I first loved and even the ones I love today have sugar probably as their second ingredient, dairy being first, sugar being second, and fruit being third. But I learned to like yogurt quite a lot, and I have it for breakfast every day. The third ingredient, my current favorite breakfast, is granola. And again, granola is a thing that became a known thing and a popular thing maybe when I was in high school. It wasn't a thing before that. There was cornflakes and there was tricks and there was Lucky Charms and Cocoa Puffs, but there wasn't really granola. Oh, Raisin Bran. Don't leave out Raisin Bran. That's probably as close as we got to having a granola, at least in my neck of the woods, which was in Boulder, Colorado. I probably learned to like granola as a grown-up, but I'm pretty picky about it. I like my granola crispy. And I like it with a lot of cinnamon and kind of sweet. And I don't want it too chewy or too dry or too healthy feeling. I want something that's kind of like eating an oatmeal cookie, but all crumbled up and a little crispier. So my favorite thing to eat for breakfast, and I do it every day in the summer, unless I got some crazy wild thing in my brain that says, maybe I should eat an egg. I put the fruit on the bottom. I put generally a vanilla yogurt on the top, and I am very fond of something by a company called Greek Gods called Honey Vanilla. It's just extraordinary stuff. It's got a wonderful flavor, and it's got enough protein for me to tell myself it's healthy for me because it's a Greek yogurt, but it is tangy and sweet with a strong vanilla flavor, and it's a great complement to any kind of berries or fruit. And usually I use whatever's in season, but once it's not just berries and we get to stone fruits, I love it. Yogurt over peaches or nectarines sliced up, especially if it's mixed with the berries. The third component can be left off, but to me it is the crowning glory of this breakfast, which is the granola. For years I bought only one kind of granola, which was made by Cascadia, because it was crispier and it wasn't too heavy And it, I'm sure, had plenty and plenty of sugar in it. 
as we come into fresh fruit season this year, I have found a truly wonderful granola recipe that we can make at home. It's less expensive. You can customize it in whatever way you really like to, as long as you keep certain proportions of liquid to solids even. And I like this so much that I'm afraid I do sometimes, just before I go to bed, come in and get just one little cluster to eat as though it were an oatmeal cookie. Now that's going to make it sound like it's really unhealthy, but in fact, the opposite is true. This has got a lot of extremely healthy things in it, some of which you may not have on hand. And like any granola recipe, there's probably going to be things that you have to go to the store to pick up because they're not things that you just cook with on a regular daily basis. This recipe is called Easy Vegan Granola. And I got it from a website called FromMyBowl.com. And I have modified it just slightly to increase the crispiness factor. But other than that, I do it just the way the author wrote it. And I find it to be the most wonderfully balanced flavor of a granola that I think I've ever had. It's got traditional flavors in it, and they just are all in the right quantities. You may need to take a break because I would encourage you to go find these ingredients and actually make this for yourself. It's something you can just keep on hand to, like I said, eat by hand, eat in a bowl with some milk, eat in a bowl with some fruit and yogurt. It's just a wonderful way to start the day. Here is the ingredient list. And this will probably make about six cups. You want a third of a cup of grade A maple syrup. That means not pancake syrup, not Mrs. Butterworth's or Log Cabin or whoever it is that sells that stuff these days. You want real maple syrup. It's better for you and it tastes better and the texture is different. If you really want to. You can substitute some other liquid sweetener. You could use agave, for instance, but be careful because agave is far sweeter than maple syrup. I like the little maple flavoring, personally. It's something that I add when I have just oatmeal. I add a little maple flavoring. It isn't intense. You're not going to notice it. And you know what? I guess I should backtrack a little because there's no reason you couldn't use pancake syrup. I just think, why have something that's pure corn syrup with flavoring when you could have real maple syrup or even agave. You want a cup of nut butter or seed butter. You can use anything here. I think peanut is going to be too strong, so I wouldn't send you in that direction unless you happen to like peanuts for breakfast. I have used almond butter. The recipe creator talks about using a smooth tahini, which I think is an interesting idea that's made with sesame seeds. But it should be unsalted. I've used unsalted almond butter and I also found this cool thing at Costco a couple of weeks ago that just takes what I'm doing with this granola and sort of builds on it. This is called Kirkland Mixed Nut Butter with seeds and it's got almonds, cashews, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds all ground up into a nut butter. It's interesting stuff. I don't feel like I'd want it on a sandwich or anything. It doesn't have enough flavor for that. It seems like a weird thing to say. But to be adding all of these excellent things, the chia seeds and the cashews and blah, blah, blah. I just think it's a great addition to this recipe. But almond butter is fine. And here's a funny little tip. The runnier and thinner your nut butter is, the crispier your granola is going to be. So as I said, a third of a cup of that, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half a teaspoon of salt, a full tablespoon of ground cinnamon, two cups of rolled oats, that's not instant or quick cooking, that's regular whole grain oats, a third of a cup of raw pumpkin seeds, and that again can be replaced with something else if you don't like pumpkin seeds. I almost didn't use them the first time because I didn't think I wanted green flat seeds in here that would taste like they shouldn't belong in a granola, but you know what? They really do. So if you can find some pumpkin seeds, I think you should try it before you decide you don't like it. A half a cup of slivered almonds. Those are the little sticks, not the little flat discs. A third of a cup of walnuts that we're going to chop up or already chopped if you can buy them that way. A third of a cup of crisped 
rice, like Rice Krispies cereal. That's my modification. I just use it because I like that little crackle, that little extra crunchiness. If you decide you don't have that or don't want to worry about that, just change the pumpkin seed amount and walnuts both to a half a cup each. You want a half a cup of unsweetened coconut flakes. This you'll probably have to go buy specially. It is not shredded coconut. They should not look like little shreds or threads. They should be little flat shavings, like if you peel a tiny chip off of the side of a carrot. They are actual flakes, not shreds. If you use the shredded stuff, it will burn when you make this granola. And then the fun part, you want a third of a cup of dried fruit, any kind you like, or if you want to, chocolate chips. I don't use the chocolate chips because I don't really want chocolate candy for breakfast. I'm willing to have chocolate in a lot of forms, but not in candy for breakfast. And when you put that in, you can choose whether you want them to stay solid or whether you want them to melt and coat the granola. And again, to me, that makes it into candy and I don't want that for breakfast. So I recommend the fruit. I use dried cranberries myself, but you could use raisins. You could chop up some dried cherries or some dried mango or dried apple or all of the above, any mix you want, but only about a third to a half a cup of it. The recipe says a third of a cup. Honestly, I like a little more than that and probably get closer to a half a cup. The equipment you'll need are a large bowl, and I, I do mean pretty large because otherwise it's going to get tricky when you stir it. You'll need a large flat spatula, like a pancake turner with no slots in it, and a large baking tray. I use what they call a half sheet, which is 13 by 17 inches. And then you'll need some parchment paper or a silicone baking mat that fits inside of that or some cooking spray. The do-aheads then are to preheat your oven to 325 degrees and to make sure that the baking tray you're going to use has got either the liner on it or the parchment paper or the cooking spray on it. And if you are chopping your own walnuts, that's a do-ahead as well. All this has been a pretty long preamble for a pretty quick and easy recipe. So we're going to start by taking a one cup glass measuring cup and pouring into that a third of a cup of maple syrup. And we're doing that because it seems to me that we can measure both this and the nut butter at the same time. And with the maple syrup in the bottom of the glass measuring cup, the nut butter won't stick and you won't have to scoop it out or scrape it out, I guess I should say. So now you're gonna take the nut butter you're using, whatever it is, and pour another third into that same cup, fill that up to the two thirds cup line and if you're lucky, it'll just pour, maybe slowly, but nonetheless. Like I said, if it's a little runny, that's better for the final texture of your granola. And I'm using that fancy nut butter I told you about. And now just watch. You're going to dump that into the bowl, and everything's just going to pour right out. Most of that nut butter is not going to stick to your glass, but you're still going to need some kind of a spoon or spatula to clean the maple syrup out of it to be sure you get it all. You've just dumped that into the big bowl, which is truly pretty much what we're gonna do with all of these ingredients, is just dump them into this bowl. Now we're gonna add the vanilla extract, and it doesn't matter whether you're using imitation vanilla or fancy vanilla, pure vanilla, homemade vanilla, it doesn't matter. I actually use the inexpensive stuff for this. It's not like I'm making something fancy here. And for this, again, it's one teaspoon and then we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt and any kind of salt. I'm using sea salt, but it could be kosher salt. This just helps brighten up the sweetness a little bit and kosher salt is less salty than sea salt or table salt, so you might find that you prefer that, but use whatever you've got. Your table salt is fine. And then a tablespoon of ground cinnamon. And then you can use your spoon or you can get a whisk. I think I am going to get a whisk. That took me a minute to figure out. I guess I just feel like the nut butter is gonna mix in better if I use a whisk. And we're gonna just stir that all up until what you have here is sort of a 
sauce. A nutty colored cinnamon smelling sauce. And then we're going to start adding all of those good healthy ingredients that make up what this is about to become. Two cups of old-fashioned, 100% whole grain rolled oats. Get your whisk out of the way, she says, belatedly. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's really sweet in that format. <laughs> I don't think I should have tasted that. Wow. Okay. Two cups of oats. A third of a cup of pumpkin seeds. You can have them dry roasted or you can have them raw. Either one is fine. What you don't want is salted ones. And that's true of all the nuts in here. All the nuts and the nut butter. No salt. You're adding your own salt. A half cup of slivered almonds out of my freezer because that's the place to keep your nuts so they don't go rancid. Now my walnuts are not chopped, so I'm going to just throw them in a nut chopper really quickly here. I have a little thing with a handle that you rotate, and it should only take a moment because I don't need very many. A third of a cup isn't a lot. Now like I said, this can be any kind of nuts. You could use pecans, you could use hazelnuts, you can use almost anything. I'm chopping this coarsely. You can replace any of the dry ingredients except the oats with some other thing. But you want to be sure that you keep the ratio of dry ingredients to wet ingredients the same. In other words, if you replace an ingredient, use the same amount as what the recipe said for what you are replacing. Now in go the walnuts. And then my third of a cup of Rice Krispies. You can even use slightly stale ones if you want to, because you're going to bake them, which will crisp them back up. So this is a place to use those when you can't use them anywhere else. And then the final thing is the coconut flakes. Now please note, this is important, that we do not, at this point, add the fruit or the chocolate because they will burn if you do that. So those get added after it comes out of the oven. Now all we do is stir that all up. Get all of those dry bits completely coated in your cinnamon nut butter mix. And this will take you a couple of minutes, but it's easy work. Just give a few good turns to be sure you get that stuff all off the bottom and that you don't have any obvious dry spots of oats. And that will happen pretty quickly. And then we're gonna spread that out on the tray that you've prepared with some sort of nonstick surface. Just pour it on there and spread it out as evenly as you can. We don't want deep spots. We want everything to kind of brown at about the same rate. So use your spoon or your hands or whatever you want to, to just kind of spread it into the corners, out to the edges, get it so that it's as even and as thin as you can on this baking sheet. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing here has to be perfect. It's granola. It's supposed to be earthy and undefined. This comes from an era when that's what everything was supposed to be, was earthy and unrefined. I think hippies invented granola. Certainly feels that way to me and seemed that way to me at the time just because they coincided. But think about it, you know, hippies are into healthy, natural foods, so it makes perfect sense. Whether I'm accurate or not is another question. And now... This tray is going to go in your oven, your preheated 325 degree oven on the bottom shelf. If you have to, move a shelf all the way to the very bottom rack and then set your timer for 20 minutes. When you get to 20 minutes, pull your tray out of the oven, grab a spatula and come on back to me and we'll do the next step. Oh man, if you are not cooking this with me today, I wish you could be here with me and smell what this is doing to my house. The cinnamon and the, ah, 
I don't know what else. Maybe it's the nut butter. Maybe it's the maple. It just smells so amazing. All right, pull that tray out. Set it out where you can get to it. And then use your large spatula. And you're just going to turn that granola over. Scoop it up in slabs and turn it over. You'll see that the bottom is a little browner than the top. And this, again, does not have to be perfect, but as much of it as you can turn over, please do. Straight down the tray. When you have it all turned over, almost, almost, one more scoop. Then spread it out again. Chop up any huge chunks. There shouldn't be any really big ones, but if there are, you can break those up with your spatula now. After you get it sort of spread out again so it's not really deep, put this tray back in the oven. Back on the bottom shelf and set your timer for six minutes. While this six minutes is passing, this is the time to get your dried fruit ready. Anywhere between a third and a half a cup of whatever you're gonna use. Like I said, I'm using dried cranberries. But if you have fruit that you want to chop, this is the moment. You want little bite-sized pieces, something about the size of a raisin or a cranberry. You don't want any really big chunks. And get that in your measuring cup or whatever and waiting until the buzzer rings. Because when it does, we're going to dump that in there right away. We want to get it on there while the tray is still warm so that it kind of softens that dried fruit a little bit. If you're using chocolate chips, if you want them to stay chips, don't stir that granola after you add the chips. Just let everything cool like that. If you want them to completely melt and coat that granola a little bit, go ahead and give it a stir until it looks the way you want it to. You're gonna let it cool completely and then store it in an airtight container. And I keep mine in the refrigerator because the author of this recipe says that it stays crispier longer if you do that. I don't probably really need to do that because I go through it pretty fast, having about a half a cup a day with my breakfast. But that's just an FYI. If you don't eat it that often and you want it to stay a little crispier, try storing it inside your fridge. Your house should smell as good as mine by now. I wouldn't wait for breakfast to try this if I were you. Get your fruit or chocolate in there. When it's about room temperature, go ahead and eat a few bites and try to keep it to just a few bites. I challenge you because this is so good. It's like I said, it's like eating really good crunchy oatmeal cookies. I love this recipe. It is the best granola I have found so far, bar none. If you have a granola recipe that you make at home that you really love, I would love to know about it. I would love to see if we can top this. But right now, this is top of my list. A new podcast is released every Saturday. By the way, I want to give you a little heads up before I go today. For the past year and a half or so, I have been alternating podcasts of regular recipes with what I call quick bites, which are podcasts in which I don't cook with you, but I either just tell you something I think is interesting about cooking, or I give you a recipe that we don't cook together because it's too easy. As of now, starting with this podcast, I've decided that that schedule is too restrictive. It limits what I can do, and I want to be able to drop in the quick bites when I find them or think of them, but I also want to be able to do as many full recipes with you as possible. So the quick bites now will no longer be on a regular schedule. They'll show up when I have something in that category to share. Tell a friend you listen to the Cook Along podcast. Go now and feel virtuous and healthy because you're eating granola. And until next time, happy cooking.